Hey there, everyone. This is Jeremy with East Coast EDH. Uh, <clears throat> we're almost halfway through March, and we're going to do another deck tech video. Uh, this is actually going to be a two-parter. Today, we are going to be looking at the Gitrog Monster deck. It's one of my favorite decks to play, but if you're going to build it, you got to build it right, because you will be public enemy number one at your table, just because that's your commander. Only reason. The ability this deck has to just take control of games will be enough to scare your opponents where you need to be able to have answers and get rolling fast enough to get basically all three of your opponents um, down to where they can't do much to you or you've basically won the game. Um, generally, this is a CEDH deck. Um, I'm going to probably hoping to end up getting this around a 7 to a 9 by the time I'm done with it. But in the first video we're going to do here, we're going to look at all the cards I have in it now that I've kind of added and changed over time that I think has really diminished the power and streamlined the, got rid of the streamlined continuity that I had originally in the deck. It's kind of really bogged it down and just makes it where it just doesn't work. But you're still pretty much losing every game because you're playing the Gitrog monster as your commander. Um, we're going to go through everything. Lands, instants, sorceries, creatures, enchantments, artifacts, planeswalkers, um, how many lands you should have, how much removal. Um, this is a big lands matter deck, so you're going to need a lot of the extra land drop cards to make sure you're getting lands into play from your hand and from your graveyard. Because if you don't know, the Gitrog monster, which maybe doesn't seem that good, puts lands in your graveyard from the battlefield. But every time you do so, you get to draw a card, which is amazing value um so yeah in this first video we're gonna do here we're gonna go over at the deck see what's in it might talk about a little bit what i kind of want to remove stuff i just think doesn't work but yeah um turtles frogs closest i could get but i hope you all enjoy the video because this is part one part two we're gonna go over what i added what i changed what i think really makes this deck just really fire so yeah let's get into it Hey there guys and gals, here we are, we're gonna get into it. The deconstruction of the Gitrog monster. First, we're gonna go through how the deck's built. Um, currently, um, the cards that I added over time just really shouldn't have gone in there. But new sets come out, you get new cards, and you just, you read it and think it'll work really well with your deck without really looking at what synergies you already have in there uh, that are already working well that you may be disrupting. Um, so this guy wants you to sacrifice the land in your upkeep where you sacrifice him. That sounds pretty horrible, right? But you get to play an extra land in each of your turns. That sounds pretty good. When one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. So if you're doing multiple lands at once, you only get to get one card. Just keep that in mind. But if you're doing one, on a one at a time, you get to draw a card for each time. And a 6-6 six, six death touch for five, that's not too bad. All right, so we're about to get into it. First, we're gonna start with the lands. So yeah, basic lands, obviously they're in here. Um, only 12, which I think is kind of actually pretty light. There's a lot of fetch lands in here and fetch lands generally get basic lands. And of that, only five of them are forests, leaving us with seven swamps, which you do need black mana. It's pretty important, but. Forest, forests do play their part as well. Uh, now we're going to get the non-basic lands. This is where you're going to get a lot of your value. Ancient Tomb. Amazing. Yeah, you pay life. Two mana, two damage. Not bad. Bayou. This is a proxy, not actually uh, a beta card. As I said in the intro, there are going to be some proxies in here. MTGBlackCore.com um, I just try not to play with a lot of my expensive cards. And also, I don't really have enough of them to go around for all of my decks. So kind of works out both ways where you're not playing with something that could get damaged that's kind of hard to replace bloodstained mire there we go fetch lands we're talking about it and these are great because they're not color specific there's no pips of mana on there so you can play the black red one in a black green deck but Bog, you might need to roof somebody else's graveyard you never know a lot of graveyard recursion nowadays cavern of souls i mean common sense choose a creature type frog you're not countering my frog command beacon Sacrifice this to put your commander into your hand from the command zone. The Gitrog is a target for removal, nonstop. Once they know you're playing this deck, your opponents will be going after you. So this is a good way to play it again for cheap. 
Command Tower makes the colors you need. Crystal Vein, very, very good. Um, sacrifice it, make two colorless mana, then you get to draw a card if your commander's out. And we will be getting these lands back from our graveyard, don't worry. Dredge, huge mechanic uh, in most green-black decks. I'll think of the word in a minute. Gruel, I believe. No, that's red-green. We'll get there. Let me think about it. But anyway, if you would draw a card instead, put exactly two cards for Dredge 2 from the top of your library into your graveyard. So if you get to put two lands into your graveyard from the top of your library with your commander out, you get to draw one card. This goes back to your hand. You can play it again and kind of do that every turn. Emergent Zone. Uh, flash can be very important late game. You're trying to make sure you get your wing cons out. Fable Passage. Um, another fetch land. Gaia's Cradle. This is obviously not real either. Uh, this is a proxy. I do own one. Uh, if you watch my video before... There's a couple back. Kind of show you all my cards in my binder, and a lot of them are going to be in here. Um, this might be one of the cuts. I don't think there's going to be maybe enough creatures out for this to work. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to see. Homeward Path. Each player gains control of all creatures he or she owns. Yeah, some people like to take your creatures. And if they take your commander and you can't get it back, especially in this deck, you're pretty much stuck. Lake of the Dead. Amazing. When it comes into play, you put a land into your graveyard, draw a card, tap for a black, or sacrifice a swamp to add four black mana to your mana pool, and draw a card. Very good. Land of our Waste makes a colorless, uh, add a green or black, and it deals damage to you. This might come out for another basic. It's not necessary. Um, Peatland, pay a life, add a black or a green. Can't make a colorless, but you can sacrifice it to draw a card. And when this goes to the graveyard, you get to draw another card. There's synergy there. Overgrown Tomb. You can fetch this, so it's worth it. Phyrexian Tower. Um, do you have a good amount of creatures in the deck? You can sacrifice a creature, add two black. A little extra mana ramp, but not super duper necessary. But there is one creature in particular that we kind of want to go to the graveyard at a certain point. So we'll, we'll see about that. Vista, another fetch. Strip Mine. Recurrable in this deck. So, if that's how you want to win the game, and you're playing four to six lands a turn, you can pretty much stop your opponents from playing the game. Um, Tectonic Edge destroys non-basic lands, um, but they have to have at least four lands. So this one's, meh, not as mean. Fetch. Wasteland. Destroy target non-basic land. Right up there with a the strip mine. Mean, but necessary. Fetch and fetch. It's all about the fetch. But yeah, that's the lands. Um, not going to be a lot of changes there, but I do need to add more basics. I want to get to at least 40, maybe if not 42 lands in this deck because they just matter. All right, so what's a commander deck without a little bit of ramp, a little bit extra mana? You got to have it. So we're going to start here. Birds of Paradise flying. Golarian's flying in Italian for one green. Zero one, you can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Very good. Dark Ritual. One black for three black. That's not bad. Elvish Spirit Guide. Exile the Spirit Guide from your hand and remove it from the game to add a green to your mana pool. You can do it as an interrupt, which interrupts, which I learned recently from one of my friends, actually happen before an instant. So you, you can stop an instant from happening with an interrupt. But they kind of... Back in the day, they errated it. Now it's basically at instant speed. Findlehorn, Findlehorn Elves. Green for a green. Grim Monolith. Two mana. Tap to add three colorless mana to your mana pool. But you have to pay four mana to untap it. This is good quick mana, but it's not good recurring mana. Elves of Deep Shadow. A green. Tap for a black mana and a life. So that's not horrible. Harrow. Very good with your commander out. Uh, sacrifice land, and you get two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield untapped, then shuffle your library. So, and if your commander's not out, you're still doing a one for two. So, it's not horrible. Land of War Elves, a green for a green. Everyone, I think you know this. Lotus Petal, free mana for zero. Mana Crypts, zero. Taps add two. Oh, man. I've seen this card take people out. I've been taken out by my own Mana Crypt. Got to be careful with it, but it's free quick mana. Mana Vault, one for three. 
Kind of same thing as Grim Monolith. You got to pay four to untap it, but you have to do this during your upkeep. Grim Monolith, you can do it anytime. And with this one, you take one damage if it remains tapped. Mox Diamond. Um, it works really good if your commander's out or not out because you're pitching a land to get a mana. So if you're doing this turn one or two, plus all this other ramp, you can get the Gitrog Monster out very fast. And if he is out, when you put that land into your graveyard, you get the draw a card. Priest of Titania. Tap for green for each elf in play. Um, this might be a cut. There's elves in here. I might take some elves out and just put more lands and maybe some more cultivates and such. We'll see uh, in the next video. Roiling Regrowth. I like this one because it's an instant speed. You sacrifice a land, which means you draw a card, and then you get two lands into play. They're tapped. Can't use them, but if you need to draw that card at the top of your library, this is a way to do it with your commander in play. Secure Tribe Elder. Tutors, uh, tutors for land. We have to sack him. It's nice to have a block or two late game. Soul Ring. I mean, if you're playing commander, I think you have a Soul Ring in your deck. Yeah, pretty basic ramp. Not going to be a lot of changes there, I don't think, but there might be a few. All right, so the further along we go in this video, the more magic terminology I think I'm going to be using. Um, right now we're going to be talking about lands matter cards, extra land drops, and recursion cards that get cards back from your graveyard into your hand or into play. Uh, first, we're going to start with Azusa, Lost But Seeking. Very useful um, for getting lands into play while your commander's out to sacrifice. You can play two additional lands on each of your turns. And Crucible of Worlds, hand-in-hand -hand with Azusa. Those lands you're sacrificing, you can now play from your graveyard in two of them a turn. So this is where there's multiple strip mines, wastelands, even the fetch lands, um, let, lets you interact with your opponent's board state and draw a card at the same time. Deathrite Shaman. Those lands you just stripped or destroyed with wasteland, you can now exile from any graveyard to add one mana of any clergy mana pool. Um... You can also exile an instant or sorcery card from a graveyard to make each opponent lose two life. Or if you exile a creature from a graveyard, you get to gain two life. Which can kind of be necessary depending how those mana rocks are hurting you throughout the game. Dry to the Legion Grove, a creature. You can play one additional land each turn and your lands. Tap for any color of mana that you need. You're pretty much just going to need green black, but the extra land drop's really useful. And we're there again, Exploration. You may play an additional land on each turn. So with your commander, Azusa, and Dryad out, you're going to get one, two, three, four, five additional land drops to your one that you get. So it'll be six a turn. Life from the Loan. Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. And Dredge 3. If you were to draw a card, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, and you return Life from the Loan from your graveyard to your hand. You cast it again. Super useful. Lotus Cobra. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, you get a mana of any color. A lot of landfall, land drop, land recursion. Ram you Nap Excavator. Play land cards from your graveyard. Um, almost as good as Crucible. Creatures are a little easier to destroy than artifacts. You definitely don't want them both out at the same time if there's some mass board wipe. But it's nice to have options of getting lands out of your graveyard in multiple ways. And that's why Splendor Reclamation is also in the deck. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield taps. Yeah, you can't use them. If you have Lotus Cobra out, you get one mana for each land that's returned from your graveyard to play. Summer Bloom. Play up to three additional lands. So let's say you had those six land drops we talked about earlier. And like, you know, basically the best board state ever. Then you play this, you're getting nine land drops. Uh, if you do fetch lands nine times, you're drawing nine cards. Yeah, you're losing nine life, but the card draw is worth it. Then World Shaper. This is the guy that kind of goes with the Phyrexian Tower. Um, when he attacks, you put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. So when that happens, if you hit three lands, you get to draw one card. If you hit one land, you get to draw one card. When he dies, put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. You kind of need a way to get rid of him to get all your lands back in case all your other ways of doing it have been destroyed, removed, or countered. All right, so 
your commander makes you put lands in the graveyard. And that's usually a bad thing. In this deck, it's not. You want to put lands in your graveyard. So along with your fetch lands, which go to the graveyard and get, get you more lands, these are ways to just kind of get usefulness out of sacrificing lands. Constant Mists. Amazing card. You can cast it for a green and colorless. It's an instant with buyback. All you have to do is sacrifice one land. When you sacrifice that land with your commander out, you get to draw a card. Creatures deal no combat damage this turn. You can keep doing this, especially if you're playing lands out of your graveyard. Uh, it's a good way to keep you alive until you get where you need to be to win the game. Crop rotation. An additional cost to cast this, you have to sacrifice land. So basically sacrifice land, pay a green, you get to draw a card. Then you get to look for a land card, any land card, and put it on the battlefield. So that Phyrexian Tower we were talking about, or maybe Lake of the Dead, or even a strip mine. It doesn't have to be basic. Whatever you want, that goes to the battlefield. Noose Constrictor. It's a reach. 2-2. Two, two, snake. Um, why would you want this? Well, you can discard a card. Yeah, it gets plus one, plus one. That's not really the point. You can discard lands to draw cards and fill your hand up. Oblivion, Clown, Oblivion Crown. Excuse me there. Enchantment. The creature has same ability as Noose Constrictor. So this is very good. Say there's really not much out. Your commander's not being blocked. You can discard cards to make your commander bigger. I mean, if you draw enough cards in one turn, you could probably one-shot someone with commander damage, which is 21 points of damage. That is built up over time, or if it's all done at once. Scape Shift. Sacrifice any number of lands. So this is one's like, yeah, you get to sacrifice as many lands as you want. You sacrifice one, or sacrifice them all. Then you look for that many land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. This is pretty good with Lotus Cobra out, and for filling your graveyard up with lands that you can play again, depending how many land drops you have or haven't done on that turn. Very, very good card. Sylvan Safekeeper, sacrifice a land, target creature you control, gain Shroud until end of turn. Someone's trying to sword to plowshare or path to exile your Gitrog monster. Not if you sacrifice a land and make him have Shroud, and then you get the draw card. She can also protect herself and any other creatures you have on the battlefield. Wild Mongrel goes with the snake and the crown. Discard cards, gets a buff out of it. Zuron Orb. Now this, this has got me out of a pinch once or twice. Um, those mana rocks can hurt after a while, and you can get down to a pretty low life total. This is a free spell that lets you basically draw cards and gain life for free. And if you're playing cards out of your graveyard, land cards, it's just a no-brainer. Very, very good. I don't see too many changes happening in this pile. Maybe one or two of the discard effects going away, but that's about it. Well, you can't just be sacrificing and discarding lands and drawing cards and attacking with a giant frog. You need protection, you need to interact with your opponent's board states, and you need removal. Assassin's Trophy. Grain to black, destroy, target permanent, and opponent controls, so you can't use it on your own stuff. Then they get to put a basic land into play. It's it's good. They get a land, whatever. Autumn's Veil. Spells you control cannot be countered by blue or black spells this turn. Um, also, your creatures gain basically hexproof uh, from blue or black spells. This can prevent a counter spell from countering your spells. So it's really good if you want to get your commander out, your win con. This will protect it. Dark Blast. A black target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Dredge three. Minus one, minus one. What does that do? Well, if you have enough sacrifice land effects or put lands into your graveyard effects on the battlefield, you can do it multiple times a turn. You can probably get this up to like a negative four to five. I mean, if you're really, really far in the game, maybe eight for an Avacyn, unlikely. But it gets around indestructible and that's the point you need that sometimes damnation destroys all creatures that cannot be regenerated but does not affect indestructible so that's why the minus counters can be important or minus minus one effects gets verdict target player sacrifices a creature and loses a life it's good if they only have one creature out um and as long as it's not sagarda 
So generally, Avacyn's not in the battlefield alone. Um, I'm going to rethink this one. This could be a better removal spell. Um, we'll see. Heroic Intervention. Permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible on the turn. So, this can stop one of your opponent's board wipes from blowing up your board or your own damnation. If you have enough mana in this deck, you should. This is just a good card overall. Karn the Great Creator. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated. The really only main reason it's in here, um, minus two... There are no sideboards and commanders, so that doesn't work. Um, you can turn target non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its CMC. So if your opponents have like zero drop mana rocks out, you can just turn them into creatures and they die. This is one, I mean, I like, it's good for slowing your opponents down, but it's really, there's not a lot of that in here outside the strip mines and wastelands. If you're already doing that, the game is won, so this could be a removal. Nature's Claim. Destroy tar artifact or enchantment, its controller gains four life. Um, if that mana crypt is really just doing, a, doing, doing, doing damage, yeah, I said a lot because sometimes that's how many turns in a row it happens. Just blow it up. You should have enough lands at some point, and you gain four life back. Um, <laughs> I lost the game recently. Um, I only had it out for a few turns. I got put down to a low, low love title life total and i was trying to uh ramp back up to get out of it but it ended up killing me so sometimes you have to this is generally for your opponent stuff though opposition agent flash you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries put this in any black deck i mean you get whatever they're tutoring for um if they're getting lands with a cultivate you get the lands um, yeah, it's crazy. Exile each card they find. It's not non-land card. You can play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. You may spend mana as or mana of any card to cast them. It's so good. Toxic Deluge. I think one of the best board wipes in the game. Um, you have to pay life. All creatures get minus X, minus X. This gets rid of the Avacins. This gets rid of the Ulamogs. The indestructible Adrazis. Once again, if you're playing black, this should be in your deck. Veil of Summer. Um, similar to Autumn's Veil. Uh, you get to draw a card and your opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. And spells you control cannot be countered this turn. And your permanents gain hexproof from blue and black until end of turn. Not just spells, just complete. So they can't activate abilities or anything. But yeah, you need to interact. You need to stop stuff from happening. And you also need to make stuff happen. So if you've been playing Magic, you know you're not going to win a game if you're top decking the entire game. You need to get through the top of your library as fast as you're possible, drawing cards, knowing what's there, putting what you need there. Um, if you're new to the game, that's the best way to win. You need extra card draw, and you need to put cards where they need to be when you need them. Ad nauseum. At instant speed, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost, or CMC. You can do this as many times as you like. So if you know what's on top of your library, and you know they are land cards, and you do it one at a time, you get rid of land, draw a card. Which kind of sucks, because you're knowing that one land that was there is gone. But you're getting a free land to your hand. And repeat this for as many times as you like. Um, so if you can stack the top of your library and kind of know what's up there, you can draw what you're looking for. Bolus's Citadel. You can look at the top card of your library anytime. You can play cards from the top of your library if you cast a spell this way. Pay life equal to its CMC rather than its mana cost. So this is similar to Ad Nauseum, except instead of going to hand, these spells go into play. It is expensive to put out. Also, though, if you have 10 non-land permanents and your opponents are almost at their end, you can make each opponent lose 10 life if you can sacrifice 10 permanents. Dark Confidant, similar. At the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its CMC. Now, all these um, beginning of upkeep triggers you might be having with the Gitrog monster, you choose how they happen. So, 
you can choose to sacrifice the land and draw the card first, or you can choose to reveal this card, put it in your hand, then sacrifice the land and draw a card. So if you know what's up there, you can kind of control the order of effects. Demonic Tutor. Classic magic card. Search your library for one card, take it in your hand, reshuffle your library. Entomb. Take a card from your library and put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So if there's a land you want to play from your graveyard, you use this, put it in there, draw a card, then play the land. A lot of value. Noxious Revival. Phyrexian mana. That means you can pay a green or two life. At infinite speed. Take a card from your graveyard and put it on top of your library. Works kind of well with the Dark Confidants and the stuff you might want to cast um, from the top of your library. Rift Sweeper. When it enters the battlefield, choose target face-up exiled card. So as long as you're not foretelling things and it's not saying this card is exiled face down, you can have anyone shuffle that card into their library when this comes into play. So that's not bad. Let's say you're Eldrazi that we're going to get to in a little while or one of your favorite spells gets exiled, you can get it back. Then you tutor for it. Sylvan Library, amazing. At the beginning of your draw step, which is after the upkeep, you can draw two additional cards. If you do, you have to pay four life for each of those cards. So you kind of put your hand aside, draw one, draw two, draw three. Um, then if you take all three, you're painting it life. Or you can put them back in any order. So if you're playing effects from the top of your library, you know what's up there. Sylvan Scrying. Search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So this will get you that Gaia's Cradle if you're playing it. The Phyrexian Tower, the Strip Mine, you know. This gets you that non-basic land that a lot of the fetch lands can't do. The Vampiric Tutor. Instant. Black. Pay to life. Search your library for any one card. Shuffle your library. Then put that card on top of your library. You need to be able to control the top of your deck as much as possible. To ensure victory over your opponents. Because they will be doing the same to you. And really all that matters is who's doing it the most. And just like when you're getting to the end of a Magic game. We're getting to the end of this deck deconstruction and breakdown. We're going to talk about things you want to do to win the game or help you win the game. Avenger of Zendikar. When it enters the battlefield you get 0, 1, green, plant creature token for each land you control so if you have 10 lands you get 10 plant tokens plus the avenger then whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control each of your plants gets a plus one plus one counter this is a land matters landfall lands effect deck you just need to be able to get this out when you need it out and get in for damage and this is the guy you want to be out right after you cast or put avengers end cart into play Crater Hoof Behemoth has haste. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn. Where X is the number of creatures you control. I mean, you just got 10 plants into play. This guy's going to be a 15 15. Um, 16 16 counts himself. If your commander's out, 17 17. And your commander's going to be a 14 14. Death touch. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's been done done to death, I guess we'll say, but it works. And if it works, you got to do it. Exsanguinate. Black and X. Each opponent loses X life and you gain life for each life loss this way. So let's just say you're playing a ton of lands. You've got your uh, Lotus Cobra out. You're playing lands from a graveyard. you got a ton of mana. I mean, what else can I say? It just works. Finale of Devastation. Now this one. This can be brutal. Get a creature from your library and or graveyard with CMC X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Um, if X is 10 or greater, creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So if you find Avenger of Zendikar with this, but pay 10, and all the plants come into play, then you play a bunch of lands. Um, all your cre It's basically a crater hoof, but with haste. No trample, though, so you just need to be able to get through. I don't I don't know. I don't know why I did this. Kadama of the East Tree. It's a reach creature. Um, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, 
If it wasn't put there with this ability, you can put a permanent card with equal or lesser CMC from your hand. I just figured it'd be like an extra land drop for six mana. Yeah, this is 100% coming out. This is what I've been talking about the whole video, though. You just see these cards, and oh man, they're really cool. It's going to be really good. It just doesn't work in here. It's not necessary. It's too slow. It's a 6-6 six, six with a reach. It doesn't have trample. It doesn't give a buff to any of your creatures. It just does not work. <sighs> Tooth and nail. Choose one. Search your library for up to two creature cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Or put up to two creature cards from your hand into play. For seven mana, or for nine, you can just do both. And this is that Avenger Crater Hoof win the game, bye bye everyone, that you might need to Autumn's Veil or the other one, forgot its name. But it stops your spell from being countered. This is a spell you don't want to have countered. This is how you win. Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. Um, when you cast it, so if you tooth and nail this, you don't get the effect. If you cast it, you destroy target permanent. It has Annihilator 4. So if it attacks, defending player sacrifices 4 permanents. It is indestructible. The key thing here is, when this is put into a graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle your graveyard into your library. So say your, your library is getting pretty low. Um, you might run out of cards, you might get milled, you might just overdraw yourself to death. This puts your graveyard back, so that does not happen. I think I'm going to add one more of these. Probably of the Eldrazi type, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, just doesn't hurt to have two. But yeah, that's it. We've gone through the whole deck. I'm going to be posting a uh, deck list of cards and all that. Um, not posting, but adding to the video towards the end so you guys can kind of see what's in there uh the counts of everything for instance and sorceries and all that but yeah i hope you enjoy the video and i hope you enjoy the reconstruction of gitrog even better all right we're well, there we made it um thanks to all of you who actually made it and watched through the entire video i hope you enjoyed it um leave some comments below if you think maybe you want some of the cards listed on the next video, like in between each segment, or if you want a whole deck list at the end, end of the video, just give me some feedback. Let me know. I can totally do that. Um, I just figured going through the video, you can kind of stop and watch whatever section you want to look at. Kind of see the cards and get an idea of what they are. But if, if you guys would like a list, I can totally do that for y'all. Um, next video is going to be a lot shorter. Um, I don't think I'm going to take that many cards out. I'm going to say probably somewhere from like 8 to 12. Maybe do a couple switches, nothing too major, but I think it will totally streamline the deck and make it work a lot better. Um, you'd be, be surprised what a few simple changes can do to really help your decks perform at a next, even more powerful level than they're already at. And thank you again for watching. And yeah, until next time, this is Jeremy from East Coast EDH, signing off.